prayer in the presence of God impacts and affects your body. Sickness has to flee. They didn't go to prayer for change and alteration in the physical realm, but that was the result. That cancer will have to leave the body. Now, we said Jesus in Luke 9, he said, and it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, John, and James and went up into a mountain to do what again? To pray. Again, we read that. He went up into, every time he went to the mountain, he didn't pray, he he didn't go to the mountain to relax. He went to the mountain to pray. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Now watch what happened. As he prayed, everybody say, as he prayed, prayed. something happened. So every time you go to prayer, expect something to happen. Something happened as he prayed. As he prayed, they're not showing me on the screen. I don't know why. All right. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Stop. What happened? Prayer affected his physical body. Are you with me? Talk to me, somebody. I said, something happened. See, power is being generated and being released from inside and goes out. Is that true? Right. Because the Spirit of God resides in you. So as he prayed, the power began to rise. And it began to show forth on his countenance. Nothing new. It's not new. Why? Because go back into the Old Testament. Moses spent time on the mountain with the Lord. What happened? Huh? Prayer in the presence of God impacts and affects your body. Sickness has to flee. They didn't go to prayer for change and alteration in the physical realm, but that was the result. So even if you don't go, Lord, please heal me, please heal me, please, you stop that, start praying in the Holy Ghost. Let the power rise from within that will alter everything in your body. That cancer will have to leave the body. Glory be to God. Because when Jesus steps in, the devils flee. They become restless. Watch, read the Gospels. Every time Jesus went into a place, the devils began to make a hue and a cry and say, Why did you come here? Correct? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His countenance, it affected his countenance. Watch this. The fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. What happened? The power not only affected his body, but his clothing as well. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. That's why the woman said, if I can touch what? And many people, in another reference in the New Testament, if I, we see that many people touched the hem of his garment and they were all healed. Paul sent forth handkerchiefs and they were healed. We call it the anointing, yes. Let me tell you something. Today we pray over mantles, we pray over handkerchiefs and give them. Paul never prayed. Did you realize that? Paul never prayed over those handkerchiefs. In fact, there were bands. That means he was working, and while he was working, he used the kerchief to wipe his sweat. And when they took that, the devils recognized. Tell me, was, man, was Paul a man of prayer? Was Jesus a man of prayer? They didn't pray essentially, Lord, fill my body, my, my clothes with your power. Fill this, Lord. Fill this oil with power. No, he never, they never prayed like that. But that's how we do. Why? Because we lack power. We have not spent and invested that amount of time in prayer. We have to get out of this. Lowest level of Christian living where we're always praying for our needs, 
our victory, our success, our job, our business, our money. We got to go beyond that. And realize that when he steps in, all that will be taken care of. If it is not, then he gives us the power to take care of that. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. So when he prayed, it affected his body, it affected his clothes. So that, what am I trying to say? I'm saying that we can pray to the degree where it affects our bodies. Now, wait a minute. It affected so much that others could observe it. When Moses' face began to shine, Moses did not know his face was shining. But people saw that. So... If I'm a man of prayer, it should show forth. Not because I go around telling people, I pray for eight hours, I pray for four hours, I fast for ten days, I pray for hundred days. No, no, no. Without you telling them, they should know. There must be something different about this man. What is the secret? See, that is real prayer. When people go around telling, I fasted for 21 days, I fasted for hundred days, this is the 300th day of fasting and prayer. That's religion, man. That's boasting. No, don't tell nobody. He said, when you fast, all your hair. Don't look like, don't appear like you've been fasting. Because when you do it in secret, the Father will reward you openly. Come on. Because you have a hunger for God. You have a hunger to, de to delve deep and get closer to God. You are praying. Hallelujah. His clothes, listen. When we are so filled with the Spirit of God, we emanate something. First the body, then the clothing, then the atmosphere around us. Do you know everyone carries an atmosphere? Everybody carries an atmosphere. We're in a serious meeting. My, wa my wife walks in, we all start laughing. She carries an atmosphere of laughter, joy. Yeah, that's right. So everybody carries an atmosphere. Here, watch this. The Bible says, when Peter walked on the streets, they laid the sick on the street. Peter never touched. Peter never prayed. Was Peter a man of prayer? I want you to see how you grow in the levels. This is, this is what I'm talking about, changing levels. Prayer is a system of changing levels. They moved in the level where they did not even have to pray for anybody. They just had to come into the proximity. So there is that level. So are you hungry enough to pray? Are you hungry enough to invest time to pray in that manner? It's not like today you get excited and you go home and you pray for four hours and tomorrow you can't pray for four minutes. No, it's not that I'm talking about. I'm talking about consistency. It doesn't happen overnight. It took 40 days for Jesus. Don't be joking to tell me, I pray for 10 days, nothing happened, Pastor. If it took 40 days for Jesus, just imagine, consistency is the key. You have to persist and consist in following through and praying much so that you are praying with a, with a desire, with, with a goal in mind. Prayer affects the physical body. And, in, um, and then, Jesus' face changed, his raiment changed, and then he has an encounter. Glory be to God. Elias and Moses come down. Elijah and Moses come down. And what do they do? They prepare him for his death. God is preparing us for the future. God is preparing us. In that encounter, you're empowered by God to face and to overcome anything that may come across in your life. So it's a place where several things happen. So 
we have not prayed enough if we're not experiencing these things. Because all these are possibilities. There are several possibilities in the realm of the Spirit. But most Christians are not able to experience them because we, number one, we're not, we're not enlightened. We, do not, we lack knowledge. We're ignorant about that. Number two, we're not consistent enough and we're, we, uh, we veer away and we kind of be, get distracted and we lose sight of what God has promised. And we just live for the day. We think, most people think, my life ends when I die. No, your life doesn't end when you die. When you die, you change suits. You change realms. When you drop this body, you are no more of any value on this planet. But you're of value somewhere else, if you're in the Lord. Are you with me? God does not throw you into the dustbin. No, you came from somewhere, you're going to some other place. Now, but during this period of time, you put on a body, you put on a suit. What does the Bible say? You have prepared for me a body. Is that true? Is that what Jesus said? That means that spirit was there before. For the spirit to wear a suit. God prepared a body because without the body, Jesus was illegal here as a spirit. So God prepared a suit for every one of us to accomplish his purposes on this earth. That's why we need to take good care of the body because if our body is sick, we cannot fulfill God's purposes. It's not just survival. It's not just taking the right medication, growing fat and not able to move. Somebody, two people have to carry you to even stand up. You need help. You're a waste over here. You're not accomplishing anything. Please don't take me wrong. I'm just trying to be a little, you know, uh, to uh, jog your uh, senses. I've said that. But I'm saying we got to take good care of this body. That doesn't mean you go beyond limits and go, you know, to, to, to the point where you give too much importance to the body and no importance to the spirit at all. No. Your spirit man is the one that has the destiny of God into, in, established in. To accomplish that, you need this body. Amen? So we take good care of this body. We have to take good care of this body. Not so that, just so that I will be appreciated for my apps. Appreciated for my beauty, appreciated for all the other things. Well, thank God for all that. I'm not against it. I'm just, you know, trying to, again, make you realize what is the real purpose. So that I am able to fulfill my destiny. Come on. There is a destiny that you have to fulfill. You're not an accident. I keep telling people, you might be an accident to your parents, but you're not an accident to God. You're not an accident. God had you in mind. God has a purpose for you. When the apostles, Peter and John, <clears throat> healed that man that was lame from birth, they were called by the Sanhedrin and they were questioned. They were, they were being questioned for a good deed that they had done in the community. A man who was lame from birth, crippled, no science could help him. No man could help him. But the name of Jesus healed him. And yet they were being questioned and they were being challenged. So when they, when they, when they threatened them and they let them go, the Bible says over here in 423, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had sent unto them. And when they had heard that, what did they do? They lifted up their voice to God with one accord. What were they doing? They were 
praying. Now, and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. And if you read verse 25 on, you will see that they were reminding God of the psalm that David had written, Psalm 2. So God said, put me to remember. That's another aspect of prayer. When we go to God, we go to God with His Word. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. We go to God praying in the Holy Ghost. We go to God with His Word. And then in 29 it says, And now, now Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, when they had done what? Prayed. Not lamented, not complained, but prayed. Do you realize many times your prayers are lamentations, not real prayers? Many times they're complaints, not prayers. Why did you do this, Lord? Why did this happen to me, God? Is this the way I get treated for being right, Lord? You're lamenting, you're questioning. That's not prayer. Okay? And they, when they prayed, the place was shaken. Can you see there, are, there is a physical evidence of God's power released when we pray? We saw bodies will change. Raymonds will be, you know, will glisten or there will be power transmitted through the clothing. And here we see the, the place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to Jesus. So when I pray in the Holy Spirit, I'm expecting to be empowered by the Holy Spirit.